welcome in to my Stardew Valley tips and tricks about decorating Stardew Valley. If you don't know, with the 1.5 update, you were allowed to put furniture on different items outside of your farm, which opened this huge opportunity for decorating around Stardew Valley. This is something I've now done for a while, and as I've decorated more and I've done more decorations, I've kind of learned a lot more and gained some tips and tricks that I now use all the time in my decorating just to elevate my decorations a little bit more, make it all feel a bit fuller, etc, etc. Now today, rather than giving tips about the actual decorating itself, I wanted to go through the different furniture options, the different flooring options, etc, etc, in Stardew Valley, because it's something I'm actually asked quite a lot, is where did I get this floor from, where did I get this XYZ tree from, etc, etc, and I just thought it'd be really good to have it all in one place, and just do a whole video about what furniture, and the items, and the flooring, and the fences that I use constantly throughout my decorations. So we'll jump into a farm and I'm going to show you them all together in one big video. So let's start off with the flooring. Now there's loads of different flooring options in Stardew Valley and you get a lot of the recipes in different places. So I just thought we would go through them all because I said one of the most common questions I genuinely get is where did I get that floor from? Where is the recipe from? So we'll go through it all together. Now if you go into your crafting menu on a newish save, the three paths here, so the wood path, the gravel path and the cobblestone path, you will automatically have when you boot up the game. I really like the wood path. I use it quite a lot, especially early game, just to kind of like start to map out a kind of a layout and also really like the gravel path for making flower beds so what you can do is put a bunch of these down and then put plants on top of them because when you put it down it kind of looks like well the dirt so then when you put like a little plant on top of it I can show you if I just spawn one in like this one for example once you have enough it just looks like a nice like green flower bed and I just love using these all around. So they're the two paths from the back that I think are really good. I like the cobblestone path, I just don't like how it covers properly but I know a lot of people use it. I think it's also very good early game when you haven't got the recipes, maybe you don't have enough wood for the other paths. So you do start off with three paths. And now we've gone through those three paths, we've come to Robin's because Robin actually sells so many recipes for decorating. She sells loads of the furniture too. But we'll just go through the flooring for now and we'll come back to her later. So if you click on her and you click on her shop and you scroll down, as you can see there's all the furniture. But she also has loads of recipes including the wood floor, the rustic plank floor, the stone floor, the brick floor, the stone walkway floor, the stepping stone floor, the straw floor and the crystal path. Now these are some of my favourite paths in the game. This these two wooden ones, the rustic plank and the wood floor especially, I use them a lot. I like using the stone walkway floor if I'm, I'm decorating in like the town. I use the brick floor a lot in like seating areas. I have a, like a little decoration area around my greenhouse and my 100% farm that it's used there. As I said, the stone walkway is a really nice stone floor if you're looking for more like a stony kind of vibe. I don't use the actual stone floor a lot, but it is just, it's still nice. They're all very nice floors. I really like using the straw floor. And in a couple of my decorations, I have like a like a fake like horse stop. Um, so it's kind of like a car park for your horse when you're like going to the bus or something. And I use that a lot because it's got the straw on it, etc, etc. But yes, yeah, so Robin has a lot of the good flooring recipes if you are looking for flooring. But as I said, Robin has the bulk of the furniture items in this game. I would recommend not buying any of them. I would rather just save up for a furniture catalogue. However, they are quite cheap and the furniture catalogue is very expensive. Um, so if you are looking to decorate before that, then you can buy stuff from her. I just personally would just wait and buy the furniture catalogue. The calendar is really nice for your house if you're doing house uh, decorations to your house. Same with the telephone. I like using all of these, like the logs, the log section, the seasonal plant. They're all very really nice outside. And she also sells a lot of recipes for the braziers, which you also put outside. So you get wooden brazier, the wood lamppost, and the iron lamppost. And they're just really nice to have just outside instead of these torches to kind of light up your farm. I especially really like using the wood lamppost because every time I decorate it, I kind of go like a woodsy kind of vibe anyway. Um, but the iron one's also really nice and I do like using the brazier too. And while we're talking about floors, we've taken a trip to the dwarf. Now, I've already purchased the recipe from him, so I can't show you it in game. However, the dwarf sells a flooring recipe, and it's actually one of my favourites in the game. It is the weathered flooring, which is this one, you buy from the dwarf. 
so if you are looking for a darker brown floor i really really like the weather floor and you get it from the dwarf so make sure you are checking kind of everyone for decorations because it's all very quite like spread out i said robin has most of it but other people have other things so i said the dwarf has the weather floor you buy some things from pierre I hate to say it jojo mart you can get stuff from and other places like that so it's not just robin and it's not just things you learn the dwarf has stuff too we come to my main farm so I can show you some of these floorings in action. So this floor that you see right here is the weathered floor, which is one of my favourites, as I just said. I love the colour of it. I just think it looks really, really good. So here's the brick floor. As I said, I use it a lot for like different like seating areas. What I like to do with my decorations, especially on my farm, is use one floor for like the main path and then use multiple other floors in between that main path you have it as like a separate section as you can see so i have the brick floor here up here this is the wood floor so that is this just the wood floor that's the weathered floor as i just said the brick floor is this one which is this one you need clay for that one but if you're late game you probably have loads of clay anyway and i try to use one floor like throughout the entire place especially if it's like a path because it just i think makes it look just more like neat and all put together as I mentioned with a straw floor, I like to use it as like a horse stop. So here it is in action. I really, really like this floor. But again, I wouldn't use it for anywhere else but say like in here or in a barn or anything. I've seen a lot of people decorate your barns because you can decorate inside the barn. So you can put furniture and floors inside of there. It's probably something that I will do um, in future. But this is the, what, the straw floor in use. As I mentioned, I like using the stone walkway floor when I have it near paths or with rows. That is this floor here. This is the stone walkway floor. So that's this one, which is this one in the inventory. Over here, you can't see a lot of it, but this is the wood floor, like the plank one, which again, I really like just for like a kind of like a walkway path to different places. Here's more of the stepping stone path in action. I use this quite a lot, especially around the village where I don't want like too much floor uh, flooring to clutter it. So this area here and this area here is the rustic plank floor. Another one that I really, really like. Um, I, like I used to use it a lot before I changed the floor in my main farm. This is the one I had. I really, really like the colour of this one too. And I like the like jagged edges. So that's the rustic plank floor. And there's loads more floors. So I just like put them in front just here because then we can just show them off together because I don't use them as much. This is the cobblestone path. I said here's some of the gravel path you can see it better here what i mean about the flower beds i just really like how it blends in there and here is the crystal path it's very similar to the cobblestone path it's just a nicer color i really like this one i don't use it as often as i should but this one's really nice i like the colors this one is the crystal floor again i don't use this one very much i think i used it inside crobus's um in the sewers but this is the crystal floor and very similarly this is the stone floor yeah, I like this one too, but I personally just prefer to use the other stone, the walkway um, of the stone floor. And so this one is said, I just like the brick texture a bit more. But yeah, that is, I think that's all of the parts, if not that's the majority of the parts. There are so many to pick from in this game. Um, so it's all about just choosing which one you think best suits your aesthetic for your farm, which one you like the best. And as I said, you buy them from Robin, you buy them from the Dwarf, and you just get some of the recipes. But that is flooring. So we'll move on to the next bit, which I'm going to just talk about just crafting stuff in general. There's way too many different crafting items to talk about them all individually. But the different fences, you start with a wooden fence and then the rest of these fences are recipes i really like using fences to just fence off areas i mostly use the wood or the hardwood fence but then you have the stone fence and you have the iron fence as well that you can use and i'll just show you those quickly too so this is the stone fence i'll put it just here which I do like, I just don't personally like how chunky the stone is, so I very, very rarely use the stone fence. But again, I also do use like a lot of woody co um, colours, so I very, very rarely use the stone fence. Here is the wood fence, I really like the colour of the brown, but I always kind of gravitate to the hardwood fence, where is it? Because I just like the colour a lot more. Um, and I just think, as you can see with the wood fence, because it's wood, so it's technically worth quality, you have, like, all the chips, which I really like, but I much prefer to have hardwood. Also, hardwood lasts long, this is something to keep in mind. And then you also have the iron fence, 
which again I very very rarely use but it's actually really nice and I just don't know why I don't use it again I think it's because as I said 200 times I just use a lot more like kind of earthy woody tones um in my farm but this is a really nice alternative if you're going something a bit more modern maybe and that's all the fencing options. If you come back into the crafting menu, there's more stuff too. Something I use a lot is the grass starter. As you can see, if I come back into the bathhouse, grass starter is a really nice filler. If you're trying to do a very big area or you have like a grass patch and you just think it looks empty and you don't know what to put in there, if you just chuck some grass down, maybe a couple of other plants just to make it look like kind of bushes, I just think it fills the area really well. Um, and it just looks a lot less flat that way. But yeah, so grass starter I use a lot in my builds. And then even stuff like, so chests I use quite a lot just to fill room. And you can even see up here, there's a chest there, but I've got preserved jars, casks, storage containers. Now kegs and the preserved jars, if you put them out anywhere, you can actually use them. They will function normally. So a lot of people use kegs and just fill their like entire stardew with kegs just to have a huge wine set up going but you can also just use it for decoration i like using bee houses as well for decoration i like using the signposts too so i have like a little like a pond on my farm and i've made it to like a fishing area so i put a sign down and put a fish on it to signify that it's a fishing area so signs are a really good thing if you keep scrolling down i like using the jukebox for like little seating areas so it's kind of like music have some music going I don't use much of this, but it's mostly like farm bits and bobs anyway. Here's all your flooring options. All the different braziers and the type of flowers and the statue. I like using all of this around too. Again, these are all just recipes you will unlock as the game goes on. You can buy some of them, some of them you unlock. But that's all the stuff from the crafting menu that you can use. Now it's time to come back to Robin to talk about the most important part of the decorating, which is the furniture catalogue. Now it is very, very expensive, as you'll be able to see in a second. Yeah, it's 200000 but once you get to a point you have a lot of money, I think it's so worth it if you want to decorate, because it just gives you technically a free, technically it's not free because you've paid 200000 but a free supply of a bunch of the different furniture. So we'll go through it together. So all these chairs can be placed outside, which I really love. My favourite is actually this green stool. So you've probably seen it if you've seen any of my decorations. I'll grab four stools and a coffee table, which I'll show you in a minute. And I make just a little seating area with those. But all of these chairs, all perfect for decorating, especially these benches. It's just nice to put a bench down, have that as a little seating area. But obviously the computer's inside too. So the benches, there's loads of different options. Now the couches, no you can't actually place outside. So some of the furniture can't go outside. So the couches, um, like the fireplaces, the rugs and stuff. There are a lot of things that are confined to inside. So you have to figure out what can go inside and outside. One thing I would really like Concerned Ape to change in a future update is this. I would really like to have the option to have couches outside. And this, the bookcases as well, they could definitely be outside. I just think there should be the option to have them outside. These tables can all go outside. Obviously, you can't have the painting because you can't put them up. But I would really like the opportunity to have things like the rugs because like, you have outdoor rugs and like even these lamps you can't have the lamps outside but i love this candle lamp i think it would look really really good outside in like a little seat area um so things like that i would like to have be able to have outside but i'll take what i can get and on the best part about decorating if you're doing decorating outside is all the different plants so there are so many different plant options and all these decoration um little decorative items can all go outside too you can see the ship there but here are all the plants the plants are like my favourite because there's so much variety and you can do so much with them. I love using these tree columns and like putting, say, one on either side. See here, you put one on either side of like a path or like a little area. And it's kind of its own like little archway gate in some way. But yeah, as you've definitely seen, I use a lot of plants. I use a lot of plants. I put a lot of plants under the grass to make it look like bushes. I make a lot of flower beds. The flowers just really, really elevate stardew and just makes it feel more green and just more homely and i just love using them you see they're even here i made a little picnic area but anywhere that i have a gap i put in plants basically so i think that, like the biggest most important part about decorating to be honest is all the plants and also remember the statues that you find and acquire throughout the game they're not recipes obviously um 
So like the chicken statue and the bear statue and you saw the Junoro statue, even like these statues, the fortune, the uh, perfection ones, they can all go outside. These green serpent statues that you get from the crane game in the movie theatre, same with the Wombus statue. There's a couple of trees as well. So this tree and this tree that you win in the claw game and they're really really nice trees they're really nice to have in decorations because you can keep them kind of like at the back i think i actually do have one up here yeah so they're nice to have like kind of like at the back have it like a tree uh, this is actually one of my favorite areas i've done um is have all these little beehives there's my bear statue little juno my statue is one of my favorites too here you can see a bit more about the tree columns and the final item we need to talk about is the wallpaper catalog which you buy from pierre um, Pierre is closed, so I can't show you, but you buy the wallpaper catalogue from Pierre. It's actually just called the catalogue, but this is where you get the flooring and the different wallpapers, and there are so many. If we just look through them together, like, look at the amount there are. Like, it truly goes on forever. Um, this one is genuinely really, really worth it. And then you can have the, just mix and match all the floorings and the wallpapers. You can't actually put these floorings down um, outside of the house. You can put them in your house, obviously. And that's what they're there for. So, for example, I have this flooring all over, but I have different wallpapers up. So, I have this one in here. I have this one in here. That's a different flooring, too. I have a different flooring in my kids' room. I have this wallpaper up in here. I have a different one in here too. I have a different one in here. I have different flooring too. So you, the good thing about that is you can mix and match. You don't even have to have the same room and the same different wallpaper. So even with this room, there's two different walls. So I have them as different wallpapers. I don't think I did that. I think the game might have done that for me. Or Leah might have done that for me. My wife in the game. Um, but yeah, so that's where you get the wallpaper and the flooring. And that is kind of all I've got for different furniture items in the game so that's how you get the different flooring the different fences the different um crafting recipes the furniture catalog the catalog now, there is a lot of information um in this video but again as i said robin has the most of it the dwarf has some stuff pierre has some stuff if in doubt download the mod just to spawn it all in that's my <laughs> number one tip if you're playing on pc you want to decorate just download this mod it'll make your life so much easier um and i probably should have just started off by saying this but otherwise that is all i've got for you today uh, for more decorations for more tips i have a whole playlist of it on my channel um and subscribe and i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next decorating video 